What's going on guys? We're gonna have a very interesting conversation today about you. One of the things that I see with people trying to start businesses online is this irrefutable disregard for commitment and attaching yourself to this new project. One of the things, let me explain to you how I came up with this. Let's talk about marketing. When I see these marketing videos, there are certain phrases, there are certain words that they use. Easy, simple, doesn't take a lot of time. I literally saw one video was like, you could take our program and then two to three months, you could be making $20,000 per month. And I heard that and I, I watched that ad again. And this is something else too, because I actually spend a lot of time watching ads to see what works, what doesn't work. And one of the things that I'm consistently starting to see is these ads that make these very bold, very big, really large claims. I don't see them running that long. And what and I'm gonna tell you why I think that. I saw a video where people, well, the guy was talking about how to buy a home using the DSCR mortgage, I believe, which goes upon the potential rental rate of this house to actually get the mortgage. And I looked at the comments and the people just were not buying it because this would have been something that a lot of real estate channels would have been talking about for years that if it was simple, once again, can you get a DSCR mortgage? I'm not sure if I'm saying it correctly. Absolutely, it happens, but I don't think that you can just go out, find a house, put a contract on a house, and then go out and get one of these mortgages that's gonna be based upon rental income before you get a renter. And this is something else too. You know, back in that area, I'm seeing a lot of people who have houses up for rent that are just sitting there empty. So, but, but back to the comments, a lot of people were like, this isn't going to work. Investment property, you're gonna need 20, 25% down. And the people just were not buying it. And I'm starting to see that these ads that make these very large, very big promises are often disappearing quite quickly, very fast in many regards because people are just not simply buying it. So the kudos to the public to start the smartening up because here's the thing, and I'll talk about what went, happened with me. There's the first Glendon working in a hospital, was in the military, then got out the military, worked in the hospital. I didn't understand the kind of person that I needed to be to have a successful business. I had no clue, I didn't understand. And only after I had fallen hard in life did I begin to get understanding because I was forced, absolutely forced to relearn things. And I actually, like I'll give you an example of something that has been pivotal in my success. One morning I was in that boarding house and I was in the bathroom shaving. And I had that curious look on my face because I wasn't happy with myself. I wasn't happy where I was in life. I just wasn't happy at all. So I looked in that mirror and it hit me while I was there. I didn't have a savings account. I had absolutely no money. And in that moment of clarity, in that moment, it was an, it was an epiphany. It was an epiphany. Within two weeks, I had a part-time job that I saved every penny. My main job that paid my bills, my part-time job that went toward establishing my emergency fund. So for roughly a year, I worked every other weekend and I made probably 500 bucks in minus taxes. But in a year, I had a savings account that had a little bit over $4,000 in it. And this wasn't fast. It wasn't overnight. And Considering it, $4,000 is not a lot of money. Then I had my little savings account, I had my situation, and I was working, and I get laid off. Guess what carried me through that period where I was laid off? Because it literally took me six weeks to find another job. Best job of my life for that time 
frame. And that money, because once again, you have to understand, you have to become the person that you need to be to make your business successful. And this is one of the things I consistently see that I consider false, that I consider somewhat reckless online, that you, whoever you are, wherever you are, can take our course and then within a matter of weeks or a few months, you're gonna be making twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month. I don't believe that, and I'm gonna explain to you why. I'm an online course creator, and when I was doing thirty days to twenty five hundred, it was a course that I would do on YouTube. If you showed up, you got the lesson. If you wanted the build it, the build up the whole build up course, you had to pay for it, right? And that course taught me a lot. Number one. And I'm gonna say this with complete honesty. All of my people who already had businesses did much, much better than the folks who never had a business. I had one guy who was selling stuff on Craigslist. He took my course. He went from 10 to $30,000 a month in about two months because of the information in my course. So the course had value for him. And I had a bunch of people who took the course who never started a business. So the course was effective. It had good information. It enabled people. I had another girl who had a cleaning service. She took the course. She was able to scale up to eight people in about a month because of the information in the course. So why did I have some people be extremely successful and I had some people who never really did anything because the people who were successful were already the people they needed to be to become even more successful. And the people who were not successful were not the person that they needed to be. And this is this is kind of hard to absorb because I'm not saying that you're a bad person or you're worthless or I'm not saying any of that. What I'm saying is and I use myself when I left the military and I worked at Northside Hospital in Scottish Rite, that person was not the person who had the mindset, the skill sets, the work ethic to start a business. Who I was back then was not the person that could start a successful business. Just it just never would have happened because of who I was, my mindset my behaviors, my habits. Right now, and I'm not saying this to brag, but between my personal credit, I think my personal credit is like half a million dollars, and my business credit is $750,000. So I got like $1.2 million worth of credit, right? I am not using that. And I don't say this to brag, I don't say this to boast. If the Glendon Cameron, who was working at the hospital, had $1.2 million worth of credit, I would have used it. And I would have bought a bunch of dumb and stupid stuff. See, this credit is for opportunities. And once the opportunity shows up, yeah, I'll use it. But I'm not gonna use it <clears throat> without an opportunity. It makes no sense. I rather really use cash flow to satisfy my personal bills and stuff. Because with business credit, I have the understanding. You use business credit, and some of the business credit access I have can be kind of expensive if you use it over a, a long term. If you use it short term, it's not that expensive. What is long term? Short term is two to three months. It's not that expensive, even with higher than normal interest rates. But if I was to use this for like years and ye it would be crazy expensive. It would be stupidly expensive. And because I, I understand that, I'm aware of that because I'm a business person. Once again, the Glendon Cameron who worked in the hospitals didn't understand this, didn't know this, would have used that money. And I'll say this in complete all out honesty. I probably would have been in bankruptcy because I didn't understand money. I didn't understand sales. I didn't understand marketing. I didn't understand none of this stuff. I would have used that money to fatten up my lifestyle. I would have got a big house, fancy car. I would have been spending, 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 spending. So what's the difference? What's the difference between Glendon Cameron back then and the Glendon Cameron today? Number one, I have gone through some stuff and I've learned my lessons. 
once again, let me tell you, uh, when I was in the car rental business, I had a lot of my renters get tickets in other states, which shouldn't have happened because they should have never left the state of Georgia. And I had to do a deep dive research on this because these people got tickets in Ohio, Michigan, New York, Washington, DC, and they were sending these tickets to me. I mean, I would say adding it up, we've got about $10,000 worth of traffic tickets. So whenever I got a ticket, because I've learned some lessons, I didn't ignore it. I didn't ignore it. I wrote them a demand letter and they kept sending me tickets. They kept sending me tickets. Then I had to do a deep dive into the internet to find out that they could not put those traffic tickets on my credit report. And once I found that out, because legally there was no contract, there was no way that they could put those traffic tickets on my credit report. And at that point I started ignoring them, but I just didn't ignore them. I did my due diligence, I did my research. I did the things that I needed to do to protect myself because I have been through some stuff. And I know that when you have an issue that's unaddressed and you just ignore it, it usually gets worse much much worse this is the difference between who i was and who i am today i don't let problems hang around i address them i do what i need to do i write letters i've written letters to ceos i do a lot of different things that once again because i have been through some stuff that i know that if i ignore or do not pay attention to this that I'm not going to have good outcomes. So I always jump on this stuff like my health insurance. For many years, I paid for my health insurance. And when I had the heart attack, that was like a $450,000 bill and my insurance paid all of it. So that one event more than made up for all the years because I think my health insurance is about 40, it's 5,000 a year. I have not paid $428,000. So my health insurance, we're good. <laughs> we're really good. But once again, I'll, I'll, another confession. In the early part of my career, I ran around without health insurance. Cause it, you know, my mentality was it's too expensive. It's too expensive. Now I'm like, it's too expensive not to have health insurance. It's too expensive not to have life insurance. It's just too expensive. But once again, because I've been through some things, I understand some things, and this is gonna be part of the training that we're gonna do next month, shaping you up to become the person that you need to become successful, because this is another lesson I learned. A long time ago, I had my phone number on the channel, and I had a bunch of people, and it was like, if you're a business owner and you need help, call and we can sell some consulting, right? I would never do that again the way that I did it back then because I had a lot of people call me who actually didn't have businesses. They went ahead, they had an LLC, maybe a business checking account, EIN, maybe a business credit card, but they had not actually done the work to set up a business to start making some money. They have not done that work. They had completely ignored that aspect of building a business. Now, I'm gonna put a number back up my channel again next month but it's going to be real different because you're going to be greeted by a voicemail and this voicemail is going to allow me to go through and cherry pick the people because i literally and this, this is something else too the people who need the most help they want the most help they want the most directions they want the most hand holding and they don't have money to pay for those services literally uh, i will explain something i had this was during the storage auction days. I had a student, I was doing some consulting. This guy called me every day, every day. It's like, hey, I got a question, I'm at an auction, I got a question, every day. I only charged him $250. This guy called me every day for a month and it got to the point where I was like, hey, uh, we must part ways because I cannot answer the phone and help you every day. And he said, I want my money back. And you know what I did? I gave him his money back because he was going to do a charge back or he was going to do something funky. And I learned that, you know, once again, if you're a beginner and someone that wants to start a business, I have no harm. I have no bad ill will against you, but I understand where you are and the pathway is long for you to get that business started. The pathway is incredibly long 
because you got to get that business started. You got to get up and running. You got, and you know, I will help you in a group setting, but I'm not going to help you one-on-one -on -one because one-on-one -on -one, it's just, there's number one, you don't have the money that I would require. That's number one. Number two, it's unfair to you because there are many lessons because I'm just looking back at who I used to be and I'm looking back at who I am now and it's mind boggling all of the changes that I've made in myself as a person to put myself in a position to be successful because everything operates from a plan. I just don't do stuff. There's always a plan. And I love when I do live streams because people be asking me all types of questions. And it's like, what about this? What about this? What about this? And I've learned that these are good people because they participate in my live stream. So I really appreciate them. And I've learned how to dodge those questions because one of the things I would say is like, hey, you know, today's video live stream is about this topic. And I'm just simply not going to answer any questions that are not related to the topic. Fair enough. And that's been really successful because literally, and this is one of the things that would happen and it's really t been tamped down. I would literally get people asking questions about a million and one things that had nothing to do. Like I would do a live stream on the economy. Then I would have people. What about holding company? What about this? What about this? What about this? Just boom, 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 boom. And I wouldn't answer them because that's a consultation. And one of the things I used to be a person that was really hard for me to say no, really, really hard for me to say no. I have changed because one of the things that happens in the upkeep of a business is you got to learn where to put your time and efforts. And one of the things I consistently see online is that people are running away from that element of becoming more responsible, more diligent to make their business successful. Because, you know, I'm not the smartest person in the world. It doesn't take rocket science. It doesn't take brain surgery skills to start a successful business, but it does take you transferring yourself from who you are now to that person who can start a business, get it up and running and make money because who you are personally has a lot to do with how successful your business will be. Right now, there's a lot of people who are buying courses for YouTube automation, right? And YouTube automation is you use AI or you hire a team to create these videos. Essentially, you become a film production studio. You go ahead, you get this concept, you, you have this team, they do the, the script, they do the video, they do the voiceover, and then you put it out under your name and you make the majority of the money. Now, there's a lot of people who are really buying into it. And I had to ask a lot of questions because I didn't understand what is such a thrill about creating a YouTube channel and not showing your face. Once again, you have to become the person that you need to be to become successful. I have no problem showing my face on the video. I have no problem showing my face online. A lot of people do. And this is why the YouTube automation thing is so huge. It's so popular that you have a ton of people who are getting in YouTube automation, trying to create these videos, trying to find the most profitable niches to put their videos in. And it's a booming business. It's really booming because there's tons of guys who are selling YouTube automation courses and they're making some really good money. But once again, these people, because they're trying to run away from becoming the person that they need to become to become successful. And this is why all these things are going. So if you want to start a successful business, you want to become successful, you want to make money online, you can do it if you become that diligent, artistic, hardworking, proper mindset person. So that's all I got for you today. Be sure to be around for the new training. And this is one of the things you're going to have to do. If you want to get a discount on the new training, you're going to have to go in and get the money management course. There will be a price here online. And if you want to pay that price, that's fine. But if you go ahead and sign up for the money management course, then you will get the discount. And I'm only going to send people who are in the money management course 
the code for the discount. Now, why am I doing this? Money management is a critical part of being successful. One of the things I learned, and I talked about in this video, where I actually got a part-time job and started saving money. It's an important and incredibly rich aspect of being successful. So if you want the new training that's gonna teach you a lot of new business things, be sure to sign up for the money management course that's gonna be below, and be sure to go through it, and it's set up for speed. You can get through it, it's only three hours long, you're not gonna be there for days. You can get through it. You can start implementing the stuff and make your current financial system much, much better. So my name is Glenn and Cameron. I'm here today, probably be here tomorrow, and I will see you guys in the next video.